Now we can take a look at the amp head and all the knobs that we have on here. First up, I'm just going to take these buttons. There's a, you know quite a few of them that are here. I'm going to show you a couple interesting tricks. Um, one is that these are, um, you know, there's there's multiple here in the array. Um, you know, and there's there's multiple pieces going on. So let's just take this array on the top. You can see it's instance. I'm just going to turn it off for now. So we're down to one. It's also two parts. It's these two parts, um, sort of the knurling part. We're going to start with the knurling part because I actually have a bit of a modeling issue. We really should correct first. So if we go in and take a look at this um, closely, you can see all these edges are overlapping. So you might be able to see it when I show it a little closer. You can see they're overlapping and they're not welded together. This means if we were to add, for instance, an unwrap on here, you can see there's all these seams. And if I were to go ahead and sort of unfold and pack these, there's just a billion little tiny pieces. And wouldn't it be nice if we had a strip or a couple strips, you know, one half of it and then the other half of it. So to be able to do that, we have to make sure that it's all welded together first. So I'm just going to delete that again. I'm going to drop down to the weld, uh, the array below which is where this uh, took place because all I did was create a circle cut it in half extruded it and then I use the radial array to bring it around but it's caused you know I'm not quite exactly on here so above this array I'm going to add a vertex weld modifier and of course it just welds it down to a you know practically nothing because the weld threshold is so high and i know that if i start taking this down lower um, probably around 0 0.05 or sorry 0 0.005 there we go. We'll actually weld those edges together. Now, another way to look at this, if we click on the little plus sign, X view, and we show open edges. So the open edges will, will just you know show us where they are. If I turn off the vertex weld, and I'll just click here to update again. For some reason, this is on auto update. There we go. So I would had it on, uh, wasn't on auto update. You can see that with the vertex weld off, you can see all these open edges. So this is a way to be able to inspect your meshes. With it on, they all go away. So it's all one strip. So we can go about flattening this out right here. So uh, uh, below the very top instance array here. So I'm going to uh, uh, select that and I'm going to uh, add an unwrap. Drop the unwrap modifier in, and in edge mode, we're going to come up with two seams, you know, that uh, are opposing each other uh, as best as we can find. Maybe there and over here somewhere. Probably there and there look pretty good. I'm going to go and take a look at that, and I happen to nail it dead on, so that's perfect. Looks like it's in the middle. I'm going to break those two, and then I'm just going to go ahead and unfold those, and we'll end up with two strips. Turn on rotate, do the unfold or do a pack, and there's our pack of those two pieces. That's the best option there, because now we just have sort of two pieces to work with. Could end up breaking into four if we need them smaller, because smaller pieces pack space better. This is really poor packing, but we've got more to do on this to, to be able to set this up. So I'm going to go back to the rest of it. And under lathe, when you do a lathe, um, you can turn on generate mapping coordinates. And again, I'm going to unwrap a below that uh, instance array. So, And you can see that we have you know, some really ugly looking uh, splitting up of surfaces, but you know, it's been flattened at least. So it's flattened. It's just, we've got these other uglies. Now the bottom, we really don't need to worry about, but we'll put that, you know, we'll, we'll flatten it anyways. So the best thing to do really is to have maybe the whole top cap as a circle. And then, you know, around the outside and then a circle on the bottom. Break off the top here. I'm just going to simply take, you know, maybe that edge loop and I'll break it. That'll give me an element I can pick in here. So polygons by element. There's that element right there. Quick planar map it. There's that chunk. 
Okay, so um, it's not uh, stretched flat yet. We're going to do that in a second. Here's the uh, main body of it, and it's including that bottom. Now, to select the bottom, we could do the same thing. We're going to have all these little tiny triangles because it's that's how the uh, uh, lathe has worked. But if we say select by edge angle, anything inside of 15 degrees as a default will get selected. That was really easy. So we can simply do the same thing, quick planar map, and now we have our pieces. Go in and just deselect everything and pack it, and then you've got all your pieces. If I select this piece, you can see it comes out a little bit curved, and that's because of all these indents, and it's decided it needed to be that way. Eh, that's you know, a little OCD for me. I, I feel like it should be straight. So I've selected it. I'm just going to click on the straighten, and it'll straighten it up nicely for me. And so, you know, realistically, I guess it was better before uh, with a checker pattern, but you know, this, this could be pretty good. Let's check all of this and make sure that it looks right. So I'm just going to uh, get out of our um, isolate here, and I'm just going to pick both of these for now. Back into our material. And I'm going to use that checker pattern that I had right back here as my checker. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab that. And you know, here's another interesting trick you can do. I'm going to copy that out and I'm going to move it over to this one to work on. So if you take it, you can right click on it and you can say move tree to view two and it'll actually dump it over to view two for us. So let's go in and make a material. So physical material, it's going to go into the base color and I'm going to select this and we're going to call this knobs. And we're going to stick all of the knobs, buttons and switches and stuff uh, into this and we're just going to apply it. And now we have our checker pattern. We can have a look at and see if it looks like it's working pretty good. And it's looking really nice there. Now, of course, that shader is super shiny at this moment. Um, you know, it's just hard to look at more than anything. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that shine off just to make it easier to look at in the viewport. You know, we'll get that all back. You see, so you can see I've got some a little bit of stretching happening here. It's not going to be too bad. We can work that out as we go. So what I have is a two part knob. Now, you know, if any of you guys ever follow any of my tutorials, you'll know that I like things procedural and I like to try and keep things procedural as long as possible. So this array modifier that, you know, arrayed it out for us and place this across here is actually doing everything. It's even doing this little bottom piece here. Um, and that's just a little, you know, slice of a cylinder. Um, I'm going to just make this one unique for now. And we're going to do something on here that is should work nicely. I'm going to get rid of the array that's on the top of the stack of that knurling piece. And I'm going to go back into our knob here. Just turn off the array so you can kind of see it. It's one. And above this unwrap, I'm going to stick in a Boolean modifier. And I'm just going to use the attach and just attach these in. Now, I don't even need an instance Boolean modifier. OK, it's spreading it out and they're all one piece. The idea of this is if I'm not ready to commit to flattening everything, you know, it's not in approval yet and hasn't been completely approved. I can still get into the entire modifier stack of that knurling piece because it's all inside of a Boolean. Now, this does bloat file sizes and it does, you know, start causing you grief. But if you're working on small assets that are eventually going to go into a bigger, you know, a, a bigger scene, I like to keep them as procedural as long as possible so that if for whatever reason I've got to go back and edit. And then what I'll generally do is I will, um, you know, make a copy of the file and call you know copy and collapse it and that'll be the one that'll get sent over to everything else uh you know would be merged into the bigger scenes that way i've always got one that i can go back to and work with now to be able to uh work on this a bit more we should be able to um you know pack the uvs um on top of all of this and so that we've got this this final packed uv set so we've got our array modifier and 
unwrap and we'll be able to go in and pack these. But just like we did on the other ones, let's not do that yet. Let's wait till we have all of them done and then we can pack them all together so that we can paint on every single knob and every single button that we're looking for in, in here. We could have a separate shader just on these for instance. Now something else we can do is we can go in and to set these up instead of having to go and redo these we could either copy these over and just replace like delete these and just copy these over they're done but here's another interesting thing that we can do we've got a couple unwraps this is the one on the body of it i'm going to skip into this one here that's on the body of it and you can actually save out your uvs so i'm going to save out this uv set and so it wants to save back into the uh, tube amplifier scenes. I'm just going to throw it into export, let's say. And I'm going to say um, knob body. And that's exported and into Boolean, down to the circle, into the unwrap. And I'm going to save this one for, the, uh, for that piece of it. And how about that? It doesn't work. Now oh, that's something new. I didn't uh, didn't even think about that. For some reason, I guess because it's inside the boolean, it's not going to allow it. How about that? Uh, I'm just going to turn off the array so I kind of keep my head straight. Let's extract this first, and then make sure we save and load it. So we can go in and say extract selected. It'll drop it back out as it is, so it'll get it out of the boolean, and we should be able to go in and select this now and then save it. How about that? Knurling, I don't know how that's spelled, but hey, you know, you choose. So now let's go in and add that back in. So the Boolean back to the attach, attach it back in again, and we're all good to go. So over in these ones, we should easily just be able to select them now. And, you know, you can see that we've got multiple objects. This has uh, been grouped. I'm just going to say ungroup for now and ungroup these uh, pieces. We're going to do the same thing with the, the Boolean, uh, you know, option. But on here first, I'm going to go in and add an unwrap. And we can go and say load. And, of course, this is the knob body. And now you can see it's all been unwrapped correctly. Same thing. I'm just going to go back to the knurling piece. This one, we're not going to need the array there, and we're going to do it before the array, or sorry, after this array. And you can see that we haven't welded it together. So this can be interesting to see if this one works because the poly counts could change. So we're going to say vertex weld, and we're going to take it to 0 0.005. Above that, we're going to go unwrap. And in the rut unwrap, we're going to say load knurling. Let's see what it did. Gave us the exact same thing back. So perfect. So follow the exact same steps. So the, the, the problem could have been that the poly order, the order of vert, vertices, I should say, could have changed and it could have made a complete mess of things. Because they were identical, it seemed to have worked no problem. So that's those all working again. Now, same thing, we wanna go back into our knob and our, I'm just gonna try and grab this and then isolate them both. And we're going to just turn off, go to the bottom down here and we'll say Boolean. And I'm just gonna attach that on and there it is all back again. So we can actually go in and reuse, you know, UVs if they're working. So we can do the same thing down here and have that set up and then think about other metal pieces and other switches and whatnot. Maybe the base pieces here, if we wanted um, to be able to work on each of these individual things, maybe all these buttons need to get flattened out, all of the ones on the back, all these little ones in the back. And we could do all those and pack those into a single shader. So next, we're going to take a look at some of the other pieces that we can approach. But effectively, all is the same thing. The uh, cabinet here, the top, it's all going to be the same kind of thing. Think about what kind of shader you want on it. Make sure you name it so that when we export it to Substance, everything comes in with properly named shaders that we can work with.